me the broken nugget, I immediately I fell in love with that, that metallic purple colour. It was a purple that I'd never seen before. In December 2000, Aspion Corporation became the first and only distributor with marketing rights to purple gold. However, from 2001 to 2005, Li Hui learnt the hard way that mass production of purple gold would be extremely difficult. Despite using the same process each time, they could not produce consistent yields. The success rate fluctuated so drastically, the process became costly and tedious. From 2001 to 2002, the yield of purple gold was a meagre 5%. Out of 100 pieces of purple gold produced, only 5 pieces would eventually make it to the jeweler's retail stores. On top of that, seemingly good pieces would come out pitted after burnishing. This caused further setbacks to the commercialization of purple gold. By 2003, the team was racing against time to improve its production. The yield increased slightly from 20% to 30%. The dismal results caused Li Hui and her team tremendous stress and losses. Li Hui had to face harsh blame from the company's board of directors. She wondered how much longer she would have to wait before the investment could break even. Finally, in 2006, after two years of trial and error and a whopping price tag of 1.5 million US dollars, Li Hui, at long last, could heave a sigh of relief. The company was now beginning to see the desired yields. Right now, our yield is about 50 to 60 percent. And that means 50 to 60 percent of what we make will reach our retail stores in good quality. And right now, the company is making profits from Purple Gold, I feel very proud that at last Purple Gold has paid off. Over the years, the casting process went through numerous evolutions to suit Purple Gold's unpredictable temperament. Ensuring a smooth, hole-free casting requires careful attention to a plethora of details. Every aspect of the complex procedure has to be done just right, as even slight deviations can add up to complete disaster. For white gold casting, you can achieve a yield about 90 over percent yield casting yield. But for purple gold, as of today, we are achieving about 50 to 60 percent casting yield. Because of the complicated process, parameters, and modification to the machine, it becomes a precious uh, metal. Next, onto the Craftsman workshop as the purple gold pieces are burnished, fired, soldered and mounted into the jewellery sets before being sent off to various stores worldwide. The evolution of purple gold is now creating waves across the jewellery industry. Aspiel sales hit 7 million US dollars in 2007, a significant figure for a relatively new product on the Singapore market. Back in the R&D lab, Yang Lo, Mr. Lo's daughter, furthers her father's work by designing, patenting and marketing his newer inventions. She provides some insight into the life of her father. He's frequently, you know, um, uh, defying the conventional opinions of uh, people and he will never accept anything that anyone tells him to do unless he does it himself. Mr. Lowe believes in constantly challenging conventional ideas in order to break new grounds. To him, strict rules and regulations should be broken when necessary. After the success of Purple Gold, Mr. Lowe's next rebellious achievement was the invention of gold titanium, a feat widely thought to be impossible. Gold and titanium are two opposing metals like yin and yang. While gold is soft and heavy, titanium is light and strong. To make them fuse seamlessly, Mr. Lowe invented a diffusion bonding technique that bonds the two vastly different materials in an airless, high-temperature environment. In diffusion bonding, the two metals are fused only at the interface. Atoms from gold are forced to migrate to the titanium interface to form a permanent bond. With the same technique, he has since created multi-layered gold, stainless steel silver and titanium silver, a new range of jewellery marvels ready to take the global market 
by storm. Mr Lowe is not one to rest on his laurels. He continues to push boundaries and limitations using various techniques. He has since created Hamilton Green Gold and Black Gold. Hamilton Green Gold is an alloy mix consisting of gold, silver, zinc, chromium and a bit of copper. These substances are slowly melted at a high temperature in an open plate, then cooled down to reveal the final colour. Next, black gold can be created by alloying iron and cobalt and melting them at an extreme heat. The oxidation in the process causes the alloy to turn black. It's a novelty that we are selling. We intend to revamp completely this perception of how materials should be seen in aesthetic applications. We have got to be very innovative in something that we are very strong at. Innovation in materials, creative in materials, combined with the design. So that will put us on top of the world market. But whatever the colour, it all started with a touch of purple. In the competitive world of designer jewellery, the success of Purple Gold has proven that when it comes to innovative technologies, everything that glitters can be gold.